Yes, Monsieur Nervalat. Welcome to the Fortress of Meripede, dear esteemed guests. We're back! Oh, and a greeting from none other than the Duke himself! Guess we made a name for ourselves at this place. <laughs> this isn't anything new. I figured you had important matters to discuss when the two of you, not to mention the Chief Justice, showed up. Let's assume we've gone through the pleasantries and cut right to the chase. Hmm. I do remember a thing or two about Dominico. He once attempted to round up the other inmates and instigate a protest. Who does this guy think he is? <sighs> Hyman hopes nothing came of it. He once attempted to, I said, meaning that it was over before it even started. And now he's threatening Melazines, is he? To be honest, Dominico doesn't seem like much of a conspirator. The fact that the three of you bothered to personally investigate raises a flag. Is there something else going on behind the scenes here? <sighs> He's got the same concerns we do. I am concerned about this incident because something similar has occurred in the past. I wish to meet Domenico in person and have my questions answered. That's an easy one. Let me think. I think he's at... Oh, did I hear someone say Melazine? What happened? Yeah, and we're investigating. The person who threatened her seems to be imprisoned here. Really? Is Kiara gonna be okay? There's no need to worry. Clarand is protecting her as we speak. <sighs> well, that's great. But if the criminal's still... Is there anything you can do about this? Ah, head nurse. Do you require me to personally deal with the criminal? Rithesley. Okay, I get it. I'll bring Dominico to you. That's your only demand, correct? Think of it as more of a humble request. I'm here on my own accord, not to formally transfer a criminal for trial. I urge you to set aside any concerns. Thanks for the trouble. Consider me in your debt. Whoa! If Paima were you here, Grace, Paima would take this chance to ask for something really important. Well, were I still a criminal, I'd probably ask for a lighter sentence. But I'm sure Monsieur Nervillette would reject that. But enough jokes. I'll look for Dominico and bring him to you. Make yourselves at home. Our dear head nurse has mentioned you quite a few times, so I'm sure she has a lot to say. Please come with me to the infirmary. Ah, and watch your step. There's some pretty dark areas, so make sure you don't trip over anything. just had a new member join us last month. Please rest here for a moment. Oh, and would anyone like anything to drink? But thanks anyway. Thirst is a warning sign that you're dehydrated, which means you have to drink up even before that. I'll bring you some tea. I'm sure you'll have a lot to talk about.
Ah, <sighs> typical Sijuin. Concerned about everyone's health as always. Uh, why aren't you two saying anything? You noticed them too. The badges they wore on their chests looked quite familiar. Familiar? Uh, Paimon didn't even realize they were wearing them. But if both of you say so, let's go ask them about it. That's not a bad idea. I will stay here and wait for news from you. Interested in joining the Mutual Aid Network? If you'd like to learn more, here's our flyer. Our slogan may have evolved over the centuries, but our goal has remained unchanged. Here, this book is for you. You're welcome to come and sign up anytime. You two look kind of familiar. It's the symbol of the Mutual Aid Network designed by our first president. From what I've heard, it's based on something called a Medal of Peace. I've never seen one of those medals for myself, though. The first president of our network was an amazing person. Powerful as he was, he never used his strength against anyone. He encouraged the weaker criminals to stick together and look out for each other. All of us have a lot of respect for him. Anything you need? Oh, this? Are you interested in joining the Mutual Aid Network? What's that? We have a very long history, going back as far as 400 years ago. We have never had many members throughout our history, nor do we have much of a reputation, but everyone treats each other like family. Helping each other is our purpose. At the same time, we seek to maintain just dealings as much as possible. Sounds like a pretty neat organization! <laughs> All we want is to defend ourselves. None of us have ever committed serious crimes, and we're not especially powerful either. We're at a natural disadvantage here in the fortress. But people won't give us a hard time if we stick together. We should have gathered enough information. Let's head back and talk to Nervalette. Did you manage to gather any intel? Mm-hmm. The people who wore the badges belong to an organization called the Mutual Aid Network. According to them, the badge's design was inspired by the Medal of Peace. Have you seen any of those before? I personally crafted two of them myself. They were awarded to Carol and Vautrin. Carol's medal was destroyed in a fire. The only one that remained should belong to Vautrin. His Grace has requested your presence in his office. He's found Dominico. Hmm. All right. Let us talk to him first and get to the bottom of this situation.
Allow me to introduce this fine gentleman, Dominico. Why don't you explain everything to him? N Nevilet? Wh what do you want? What are you gonna do? Kill me? Calm down. I merely want to ask you a few questions. Was it your idea to send that letter to a Melusine? Uh, I... Hassan has already confessed, so there really isn't any need to keep hiding. Doubt that idiot! I can't believe I trusted him! Let me ask this another way. It was your idea to send that letter, correct? Yes. Who is pulling your strings? What? Y you're not trying to frame me for something I haven't done, are you? Hmm. It's best if you realize the gravity of your situation. The Chief Justice of Fontaine has been personally investigating your case. I assume your previous attempt to incite unrest at the Fortress of Meripede has something to do with this as well. I... I admit I acted on impulse. I'll tell you the truth. But before that, you must ensure my safety. I can do that. You see? We're all reasonable people here. I only intended to do some small business at first. Someone contacted me about delivering some goods and promised me a generous sum of more in return. After making a few trips, I was suddenly approached by the Marichose Phantom. They accused me of smuggling prohibited items, and I was put on trial. But I refused to accept any of that. The ignorant can be rightfully absolved from guilt, right? Well, I suspect that someone got me locked up here so they could get their hands on my goods. <sighs> and then you decided to take revenge on the Melazines? Over that? My initial target was Nervilet. Everyone in the Fortress of Meripede was declared guilty by him, after all. So they must more or less hold a grudge against them, right? If I could get them to strike back... But for some reason, no one wanted to team up with me. That mutual aid network in particular. What did those nobodies even gain from trying to challenge me? Seriously. In the end, I had to redirect my focus onto Melazines to salvage things. I recall that Kiara was the one who confiscated my goods for inspection, so I asked one of the more approachable guards to send a letter, claiming that I meant to contact my family. But the letter was in fact addressed to Essa. I requested that he write a threat letter to Kiara and force it to resign from the Mari Chaussee Phantom. Am I to assume that the claims you've made are your own thoughts? Have you been in contact with any suspicious people recently? No. Is it true that all members involved in the smuggling scandal have been caught? Yes. And that's all I know. Hmm. <laughs> Sijuin, please take him back to the detention center. I'll deal with him later. So, Monsieur Nervillette, you were concerned that there might be a shadowy faction looking to capitalize on the delicate situation with the Melazines to stir up greater chaos? Yes. I experienced a similar incident in the past, so I had to be prepared for any possibility. And how long ago was this incident? More than 400 years. You might be overthinking this. Time can change a lot of things. Everything's different now. What do you mean? 400 years ago, you and the Melazines you brought to Fontaine were the outliers in society. But in the present day, if someone were to threaten the safety of the Melazines, people wouldn't just sit back and do nothing. I trust that they would make different choices from before. Melazines on our way back to the Palais Mermonia. Monsieur Nevillet, the Melazines are a species you introduced to Fontaine. How the public treats them is also reflective of their attitude towards you. When people refused to place their trust in Melazines, it was because they were still on the fence about you, their unfamiliar Chief Justice. 
For almost 500 years, you've conducted every trial with impartiality. You made the right judgment each time regardless of whatever nonsense went on. People no longer have any reservations about you and even consider you a symbol of the law. Right now, your every decision will impact all of Fontaine. In other words, you've gradually transformed the whole nation. Hyman gets it now! No wonder no one wanted to join forces with Dominico! I am undeserving of such high compliments. From my perspective, I have simply been fulfilling my duties. It isn't anything special or worthy of praise. I'm simply fulfilling the promises I've made and searching for answers through my judgments. It is unnecessary to hold me in such high regard. The complexity of human emotions and willpower far exceed those of mine. As a matter of fact, I believe that you are the ones who deserve my respect. There's no need to be so modest. The current state of affairs says it all. You're no longer that outsider you were before. Even if you wished to investigate something on your own, many would take the initiative to lend you a hand. I must say that you've made a fair point. Thank you for clearing my doubts. Now that the case has been settled, I should get going. Huh? You're leaving? And so soon, too? Why not stay for a cup of tea? Thank you for the offer, but I know how this place works all too well. While some are here to redeem themselves, there will inevitably be those who harbor resentment towards me. The less time I spend here, the better. My presence could very well result in an unwanted disturbance. In that case, I'll have to insist. I still have two more things to say. Please, go ahead. The first is about the guard who helped Dominico send that letter. Ah, I know of what you speak. The guard was indeed deployed from the Palais Memonia's staff. However, as I mentioned earlier, I visited today on personal business. Therefore, I leave that matter in your hands. Well, that makes things a lot easier. Hey now, don't let your imagination run wild. Those from up there have a tendency to sympathize with others. However, down here, such thoughts will put you at high risk. I'll have a chat with the guard and remind him to take precautions in the future. I see no issues with that. Great! That's one thing out of the way. Uh, what's the other thing you wanted to say? The other thing was born from my own sense of curiosity. Now, I've heard that you investigated the mutual aid network. Is that right? Yep. Nervalet thought their badges looked familiar. I noticed the small gang as well when I first took over the Fortress of Meripeat. They were not great in number, but every member always made sure to stand up for what was right. I've looked into their founder, Vautrin, who once stood trial and was sentenced to imprisonment in the fortress. According to existing documentation, Vautrin remained disciplined throughout his imprisonment. He had never once engaged in physical or verbal aggression. In other words, how he presented himself in prison was very different from his behavior in court. What? During his trial, I could sense that his feelings were complicated. He appeared to be full of resentment, and I believe he had every right to feel that way. Perhaps he had been putting on an act. An act? Nervillette and Vautrin had a close relationship as superior and subordinate. Vautrin must have known that the Chief Justice would make an impartial judgment. Thus, the more resentment he displayed, the clearer it would be to those present that you were upholding justice. And to those who had been sitting on the fence, Vautrin's act was a very meaningful one. <sighs> That's all from me. Does anyone else have anything to say? Now's your chance. I don't have anything to say. Apart from expressing my gratitude, that is. Well then, let us head back. No need to see us off. Please, take care.
That trial is something I rarely bring up in conversation, but... I have always felt deep regret for what happened to both Carol and Vautrin. The words he spoke in court often replay in my mind, as if urging me on to do something. But Risley said he never resented you, right? Isn't that a good thing? I believe I now understand what he wanted to tell me. I feel conflicted about those words. How should I describe it? Surprise, relief, fear, and regret. But this blend of emotions has led me to finally understand some things. I would like to hear your thoughts, too. What do you think of me? agrees with everything Risley said. As Chief Justice, every single one of your trials makes an impact on Fontaine. What do you think, Traveler? Uh, hey, any comments? What I really think is... Every trial you've ever judged has left its impression on you. And that's what makes you who you are today. That is indeed a reasonable assumption. As I said, I find it difficult to express my emotions because I cannot fully understand myself. But I trust your judgment. Since some time ago, I have begun to notice the changes that have occurred upon my person. These changes were not due to any specific occurrence, but emerged as a result of time itself. I will try to contemplate this further. Thank you both. Oh. Huh? It's raining! Oh no! I not forgot to bring an umbrella! Come on, let's hurry before it rains harder! It's raining again. I've had enough of this weather. Ah, uh, there go my travel plans. Did you read the news this morning? Quick, put away everything on the clothesline. <sighs> when is this rain going to stop? <laughs> Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry! They're planning to reanimate the monster. We have to report this to the Chief Justice. The Fortress of Meripede. It's a good place for me. Nervilet? Hmm. You could say he's the real symbol of Fontaine's justice. Watch him closely. He could be trouble. How can two completely different species possibly coexist? Who's been threatening Melisines? Show yourself! You will see much in the human world, from the delightful to the depressing. And one day, when you have dwelt among humanity long enough, you will be placed to bring judgment over all as a spokesperson for Fontaine's past. Good morning, Monsieur Nouvellet! The rainy season's almost <laughs> over! The skies are supposed to clear in a few days! I hope you find time to enjoy the sunny days ahead. 
Is the matter resolved? Yep, we found the person who sent that threatening letter. Risley said he'd keep a close eye on him, so the Melusine should be safe now. Oh, that's wonderful. Sorry for dragging you all into this. There's no need to apologize. Yeah, you didn't drag us in. We got involved of our own accord. Uh, by the way, where's Kiara? At the Palais Marmonia, more than 50 people offered to protect her. Some even hid within the bushes to look out for danger. I was worried that the excess of protection would make her feel uneasy, so I asked her to stay inside the Palais. It's very safe in there. <sighs> what a relief! Well now, it looks like the dust has finally settled. To celebrate this joyous occasion, Monsieur Nouvellette, would you be interested in an exclusive interview? That's not how you celebrate! I will consider it. <gasps> really? Of course. My schedule is full for the following weeks, but I should be available next month. Come up with questions during the intervening days, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse me, I must head back to the Palais and issue a communique to publicize our investigation results. I hope it will assuage the concerns of all. Kiara? <sighs> Monsieur Nouvellet? Uh, sorry, I accidentally fell asleep. It's quite all right. I'm here to tell you that we have caught the sender of that threatening letter. You're safe now. Thank you, Monsieur. And thank you too, Traveler and Big Sis Paimon. Everyone's been so nice to me, so I've always felt really safe. Do you remember Domenico? He was the sender of that letter. Let me think. Uh, I can't remember. My memory isn't that good, so I easily forget things. By the way, I saw Carol in my dreams just now. Hmm. Where's she gone, by the way? I haven't seen her in a long time. Uh... In my dream, she looked really happy. She held my hand and said, Kiara, our dreams have finally come true! I can't remember what our dreams were anymore, and I don't know why. But I felt really happy too. I can sense your joy. It is indeed a delightful moment. <laughs> Monsieur Nevillette, 
Are you happy too? Oh, I almost forgot! Am I allowed to go out now? I promised to model for Alof! Of course. Off you go. See you next time, Monsieur Traveler and Big Sis Paimon! Hmm. See you next time.